Are you brand new to ferrets or thinking about bringing one into your home and wanna learn more first? Do you ask yourself questions like what even is a ferret? How much do they cost? Do they bite? Do they smell? Well, you're about to find out. Hey guys, it's Haley from The Modern Ferret and in this video, I'm gonna answer all your most common questions about ferrets. The English word ferret is derived from the Latin word for thief, or furinim. If you're new to ferrets, it's worth mentioning that ferrets are notorious for stealing items around your house. Think phones, phone chargers, wallets, keys, that kind of thing. So this name is actually quite fitting to their nature. So in short, what is a ferret? They're thieves. The full scientific name for a ferret is Mustela putorius furro. In Latin, this translates to mouse-killing stinky thief. It's harsh, but accurate. And a little bit later on in this video, you will come to understand the mouse-killing part of it. One of the most common misconceptions surrounding ferrets is that they're rodents. Think hamsters, gerbils, chinchillas, rats. Contrary to this popular belief, ferrets are actually carnivores, so think like your dog or your cat. And ferrets were actually used to hunt rodents throughout history. If you take a look at this Animal Kingdom classification chart, you'll notice that ferrets are part of the carnivore order, just like dogs and cats, which means they eat fresh meat prey. And within the carnivore order, ferrets are specifically part of the Mustelidae family. Mustelids have specific characteristics like long bodies, short legs, round ears, and thick fur. Other animals in the Mustelidae family include otters, minks, badgers, and wolverines. At this point, you may be thinking, how can this possibly be true? Ferrets look like giant rats. It makes no sense. Well, you're not alone. And I think the reason a lot of people confuse ferrets as rodents is because when you go to a pet store, there's usually a small pet section. And within that small pet section, you primarily have rodents. I think ferrets might be one of the only non-rodents that are really gonna stick out. So you have a ferret and then you have chinchillas, rats, gerbils, and you kind of group them all together. But truth be told, in the wild, a ferret is much more likely to hunt a rodent than befriend one. So keep that in mind when you're considering what pets you can keep your ferret with. Once you understand where ferrets fit in the animal kingdom, it becomes much easier to learn about their diets. The easiest way to venture a guess as to what a ferret might eat is by looking at their teeth. Does this ferret's mouth remind you of any other animals you may know? Now I'm gonna present you with two photos and you tell me which one looks closer to a ferret's teeth. In the first photo, we'll look at a dog's teeth. A dog is a carnivore. Notice he has sharp teeth in the front to tear through flesh and bone. Now the other photo I'm gonna show you is of a rodent. This specifically is a capybara, and you'll notice he has two big flat teeth in front, and then the rest of his mouth has short flat teeth for grinding plant material. Now, which one looks more like a ferret's teeth? The answer, of course, is the dog. The dog has teeth much closer to a ferret, and that's because both of them are carnivores. They're meant to eat fresh prey meat. Does it make a little bit more sense now why they might call these ferrets mouse killers? Would you kill a mouse? Would you kill a mouse? Specifically, ferrets are something called obligate carnivores. And what's really important to note is that they don't have the correct digestive processes to deal with fruits, vegetables, or sweet things. So it's really important that you never feed your ferret any of these items. Ferrets can vary greatly in size depending on breeding, sex, and also whether they have been altered or neutered or fixed. Female ferrets can weigh anywhere from one to three and a half pounds, and measured nose to tail, they run about 18 inches long. Neutered male ferrets can weigh between two and 3.5 pounds, and measured nose to tail, they run about 22 inches long. If you have an unaltered male ferret on your hands, they can actually reach an upwards of six pounds, believe it or not, which is basically the size of a small cat. 
Fun fact, ferrets are actually known to put on quite a bit of weight in the winter, which us in the ferret community affectionately call winter chub. And according to Ferrets for Dummies, ferrets can actually put on about 40% of their body weight in the winter and then go on to lose it in the spring. To somebody new to ferrets, it may be a little confusing to tell whether you're holding a girl ferret or a boy ferret. But not to worry, it's actually pretty easy to tell once you know what you're looking for. You'll notice in this illustration of a female ferret that they have no uh, belly button, we'll call it. On the other hand, if you look at this illustration of a male ferret, you'll notice that in the middle lower part of his belly, he does have something present that looks kind of like a belly button. Well, truth be told, what looks like a belly button in the middle lower part of your male ferret's body is actually their penis. And that's how you tell the difference between a boy and a girl ferret. Something really important to note though, is you'll notice that both the female and the male ferret both have nipples, so don't let that fool you. So if you have a male ferret, you probably don't wanna give them belly button kisses. In our opinion, ferrets do not live nearly long enough. They have a lot of health problems, there's diet considerations, and a lot of things that can affect their lifespan. Now, there's several places that you can get a ferret, and so there's a big discrepancy between their lifespan. A typical ferret from a pet store like Petco usually lives between five to seven years. Unfortunately, due to improper breeding practices and bad genetics and a whole bunch of other factors, they have a pretty high incidence of diseases like it's solanoma and adrenal disease, so this really shortens their lifespan. On the other hand, if you opt to get a privately bred ferret from a reputable breeder, we've actually heard of some living anywhere from 12 to 14 years, believe it or not. So that's quite a range. So we originally had three ferrets. Recently, one of our ferrets passed away from uh, insulinoma. He was about four and a half years old. Moose right here is about six and a half years old. Moose is definitely on the elderly side. He's really showing signs of aging at this point. Um, he has many health problems. We actually did an entire video on that that I'll make sure to link to in the description below. Albert, on the other hand, is pretty healthy for a five-year-old. So we have our fingers crossed. In 2002, Erica Modelik with a PhD wrote a fantastic article on ferret intelligence in Ferrets USA magazine. One rumor she put to rest is that ferrets are stupid and untrainable. What she sought to do is compare ferret intelligence in some of the most common categories that we rank other animals. The first category was ability to problem solve. The weasel family is famous for its ability to problem solve and ask any ferret owner you know and they will tell you if their ferret wants to get somewhere or get into something, they will figure it out. Ferrets actually ranked above both cats and dogs in this category and landed somewhere around small primates. The next category she ranked ferrets in was memory retention and she put them somewhere between dogs and cats. Last category was ability to communicate with humans. So dogs have a unique ability to really express themselves when it comes to their relationship with humans. They can vocalize what they want. They have specific body language. Ferrets, on the other hand, are much more likely to communicate through different kinds of behaviors as well as scent. So what Erica argued here was that it's not so much that ferrets are unable to communicate to us, it's that we maybe have not yet understood or learned how to understand what our ferrets are trying to communicate. In our personal experience, our ferrets surprise us on a daily basis with the different things that they get into and figure out. One of our ferrets, Albert, actually has an aptitude for turning on Roomba multiple times throughout the day, which he figured out completely on his own. Personally, I look forward to the day where we have proper enrichment and stimulation to provide our ferrets with a more enriching life. Ferrets are absolutely trainable. And if you are looking to train your future ferret, the first step is to stop seeing your ferret like a caged hamster and start seeing them more like a tiny little dog. With discipline and patience, you can potty train your ferret, leash train your ferret, and teach them how to do a few tricks. A ferret's ability to be trained is only limited by what you think they can learn. If you need any proof, make sure to check out the trained ferret on YouTube. 
She has done wonderful things with her ferrets, teaching them incredibly complex behaviors. And side note, if you guys think we should do a collaboration video with her, make sure to tell us in the comment section below. Do ferrets bite? This is probably one of the most common questions we get about ferrets. And like anybody who works with animals will tell you, if an animal has teeth, they can bite. <coughs> Again, this biting concern I think stems from the misconception that ferrets are meant to be kept in a small cage all day, when in fact they're meant to have a good chunk of their lives spent out of their cage, interacting with their owner and their surrounding environment. This will prevent your ferret from becoming antisocial and even aggressive and exhibiting behaviors like biting. In our personal experience, the only ferret we met that had a serious biting problem was one who spent the majority of her life in a cage and a small one at that. We worked with her for about a month straight using our preferred bite training protocol, which I'll make sure to link in the description below. And after that time, we saw a huge improvement in her behavior. Also keep in mind that ferrets sold at the pet store are usually still kits or babies, and nipping and biting behavior is very normal at this phase, just like a puppy. If you have any more questions on biting, make sure to check out our video called the top 10 reasons your ferret may bite you, linked in the description below. A common myth is that ferrets smell very bad. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say that they're odorless, but at the same time, you know how when you walk into somebody's house, you can sometimes tell if they have a cat? I would compare the strength of a ferret's odor to something like that. If you're looking for ways to reduce or mitigate your ferret's odor, you can look into changing up their diet, litter box, cage accessories, bedding, and bathing routine. I've also heard that non-neutered males can actually be really stinky during breeding season, but this shouldn't be a concern for most of you because if you're getting a ferret in the United States, chances are they're coming neutered or fixed. I will make sure to link to the video we actually made on specific ideas to reduce your ferret's odor in the description below. Another thing I'd like to mention regarding a ferret's odor is their scent glands. So ferrets actually have scent glands on both sides of their anus. These glands are actually filled with very pungent fluids. And if a ferret has not been descented and had these sacs removed, if they get startled or excited, they actually can release it. They call it poofing and it releases a very pungent odor. We had it happen to us one time when we had a friend over with their ferret that wasn't descented and I would compare it to a very skunky smell. Now, a lot of you are not gonna have to worry about this because most ferrets that are sold within the United States already have their scent glands removed. However, if you're outside the United States, it might be a different story. Something that's interesting to note is that in places outside the US, descenting is often illegal. Now, before I get into how much ferrets cost and ultimately how you decide if a ferret is right for you, if you're new to my videos, my name is Haley, and I post entertaining and educational videos about ferrets every week. So if you're new to my channel, now is the perfect time to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. How much do ferrets cost? You can buy a ferret from a pet store, a breeder, or you can adopt one from a shelter. And if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to a dog or a cat, a ferret may not be the right pet for you. Typically, their price range is between about $100 and $400. Ferrets from a pet store like Petco are typically cheaper than a private breeder. However, if you get your ferret from a reputable breeder, you are likely to have less health problems later on, which could save you money and heartache down the road. When it comes to the essential items you need before bringing home your ferret, it's really important that you understand some of the big items you're gonna need to get. The basic items we recommend would be a cage, litter, litter box, food, a food and water dish, as well as sleeping materials like a hammock. I made an in-depth video on all of our top ferret product recommendations that's linked in the description below, so please make sure to check that out. Once you own a ferret, they will require regular vet visits and vaccinations. They have their rabies vaccination, their distemper vaccination, they have their regular vet visits, two of our ferrets have Desilorelin implants, and then Moose actually gets a twice daily medication as well. 
If you stuck around until the end of this video, you should know what a ferret is, what they should and shouldn't eat, how smart they are, what the truth is about the smell, and ultimately how much they cost. The question is, are you really ready to get a ferret? Ferrets are extraordinary pets. When we first got Moose, our first ferret, we fell so deeply in love with him that we dedicated our lives to learning more about these incredible creatures. And I have had so many pets besides ferrets before this one, and there was nothing ever like the bond that I formed with Moose and then Albert and Newt, our other ferrets. There really is nothing in the world like it. That being said, you really should only get a ferret if you have enough time to play with them, train them, and a big chunk of change to make sure you can cover all of their food, supplies, and surprise vet care. When determining whether you should get a ferret or not, I have a little litmus test I'd like to try. Do you feel like you're ready for a dog or a cat? If the answer is no, you're probably not ready for a ferret. That's the honest truth about the commitment it takes to properly take care of this pet. But hey, if you're not ready, we applaud you for taking the time to make everything right in your life before you bring one home. And remember, the internet is full of people like me who love to share their pets' lives with the whole world. So if you don't feel like you're ready to get a ferret now, just go search the internet for people that want to show you what their life is like and you will make their day. Now, I hope you guys found this video helpful. It was really fun to make. And I hope you take a moment to subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought and if you have ideas on what we should cover for our next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. What? Did I break you up from a nap? Say bye-bye.